All right. Welcome to The Intersection presented by Myovision. I'm your host today, Tony Florio, and we're going to talk a little bit about investor interest in the growing opportunities in the market for solutions that make gaming around cities and towns safer, easier, uh, and cleaner. So I'm here with Curtis McBride, the co-founder and CEO of Myovision, Mark Maybank from Mavericks Private Equity, and Whitney Rockley from McRock Capital. So let, I'm going to start a little bit with the impetus. I didn't just come up with this topic out of out of nowhere. We had a little bit of news at Myovision back in April that we had raised $260 million Canadian um, as we've gone through the process and we've gotten to the second and final tranche, I think is the term. It turns out that the actual final amount is $36 million bigger. So what's interesting about that to me is when I look at news around the, the market, it's a tough market. There's not a lot. Of, our round was one of the bigger ones. And yet at the end of it, it grew even bigger. So you guys are on our board of directors. You're also investors. My question to you is, investors upped the ante. Why? Why did you do that? What is exciting about the space? And what is exciting about Myovision's place in that space? Let's start, start with Mark. Um, Mavericks is focused on technology-enabled growth and disruption. What are you seeing in our space that's making Myovision an attractive investment? What are you seeing in cities that you think is about to be disrupted? Um, it's, a, it's a great question. Thank you, Tony, and, and thank you, Curtis, for uh, for having me here today. Um, I think it's a really exciting time. Um, I always want to correct the deal size ended up at three hundred million. I don't really call it an ante. That implies like a bet yep. or a betting round, and, and I don't really think that's what this is. This is an investment in a market leader. Um, and while there is some risk, it is not a bet at all. So I don't view this as an ante or necessarily upping the ante. This is building an appropriate capital base for a market leader to continue to take a strong leadership role in a very dynamic world. So I, you know, if you want to know what's exciting, so Mavericks, we look at things from a number of perspectives and, um, and we look at things from a headwinds and a tailwinds perspective. Tailwinds are you know, what helps you move forward and headwinds are what slow you down. And there's a couple things that are really fantastic from the Myovision perspective. First and foremost is uh, it's, a, it's a space where traffic is a problem. It's the number one or two issue with municipal voters basically across the world. And I, we happen to live in Toronto where traffic is arguably the worst in North America and it is ridiculous. So traffic is a problem, big pain point, unequivocal. So the question is how do you solve that? And so Myovision has solutions to make that much safer and much more efficient. And when I say efficient, I'm talking both from a time and a cost perspective. So cost at the municipality, cost of the traffic participant, safety, obviously, from all users perspective, and the efficiency of time comes in, you know, for the com commuter and users. So that's a massive win for users. And, and so that's a, a big tailwind. Second thing, you know, we're looking at a, at a longer term, higher cost of capital than a more recessionary environment. Um, and government spending is typically pretty steady, particularly as it relates to infrastructure. And this is spend that has to happen because it's economically expensive to not improve traffic. Third major tailwind, um, Curtis McBride. So one, the number one screening point for us is who are we partnering with? Who's our partner? Who's the entrepreneur? What are their leadership attributes and capabilities? With Curtis, we get a fantastic uh, a fantastic entrepreneur. He's a visionary, leader in the space, ahead of his time, uh, you know, genius level intellect, uh, willingness to, uh, to learn, be open, make mistakes, but correct those mistakes. And, uh, and continue to stay at the very front edge of his development curve. So those are the kind of partners that we wanna work with and support and resource to grow the businesses, particularly from a Canadian perspective, to be a Canadian-based global champion. We believe that Myovision has all of the tailwinds and the leadership to create a multi-billion dollar Canadian-based global champion. So follow-up questions, when you're looking at companies, you're talking about the importance of leadership. How much of, when you're looking at a company being a potential market leader, how, how important is sort of the tech or the solution and how important is the team? And is it a mix of both? Is it like one trumps the other? If you could pick between two similar companies in this space 
and you had a better team or you had something where you want, well, that's interesting technology. Or does it matter? Is it the, the secret's in the sauce? Like no, it's it a chicken and egg problem because the team makes the tech. Yeah. And if you lose the team, you lose the future tech. And so you become frozen at a point in time. So you really need uh, technology leadership and the team to perpetuate that technology leadership. So it's, it's a, it's a self-supporting uh, cycle. So I don't think you can prioritize one versus the other. It's the whole package. It's the whole package. So let's move on. Now, Whitney, McRock's been with MyoVision for a couple rounds. So you've been with, you've sort of followed the story for a while, and you're interested in what uh, McRock dubbed the digital industrial, which I think is really sort of the digitization of spaces that people don't necessarily associate with digitization. Um, but correct me if I'm wrong. Um, how do you see this playing out in urban transportation, and what excites you about MyoVision's role in it? Uh, Big question. Yeah, like a, a huge <laughs> question. I just want to just stop for a minute and just say, genius like intellect, dude. <laughs> like a mic drop. I love that. I love that. So, so it is. It is really true, and you, you know, well deserved. Um, okay, so digital industrial. Uh, Curtis knows this. We've known Curtis for a really long time. We had the pleasure of coming into Myovision back in 2018. So it's been five years or so since we've been working with the company. And, you know, if if you take a step back and look over the last decade, really a lot of city infrastructure and just infrastructure in general, it, it wasn't even really censored. And it certainly didn't have digital type sensors to it. And it was really hard to get the data and actually connect to the cloud and be able to compute and, and see what's happening on a city level. And I always think about Curtis, and, and I know I didn't know you when you were a co-op student, but I think your first job was counting cars with you know pen, paper, and a flipboard. And it's kind of where the idea came. So it kind of goes back, Tony, about you know what is it that that you know, Myovision is doing, it really stemmed from an opportunity that Curtis saw at a really young age and said, hey, I can, I can actually you know, make an impact to an industry that needs innovation. So you know, a decade ago, things weren't censored. You know, we weren't you know, taking the data, doing a lot of data analytics. And now, you know, sensors are pervasive all throughout city infrastructure. And so it's it's the analogy of the body and the brain in that the body needed to build out, and it has. And now we get this beautiful thing where we can start doing the brain. And this is where I think analytics really falls into play. And if I build, like Mark just nailed it as far as kind of, you know, what is so interesting about myovision. But when I look at the vision Curtis had before he even started, Myovision and what he has done in the team he's assembled, because it takes a village, right? It really takes a village. Now what we've got is we've got a company that is absolutely transforming the way that traffic is managed. And it's done now where we are almost seeing a virtualization of hardware, right? So it's pretty fascinating when you see all the different software applications that can be overlaid on a platform that can be offered by Myovision. I mean, I, I I woke up this morning, I'm not kidding you, I woke up this morning and I started giggling to myself alone. And I was like, I devil dog dare anybody to try and compete against Myovision right now. Like you are indisputably the market leader, right? And so much more to come on that front. So yeah, so that's it. Body, brain, we're working on the brain. Myovision's putting the brain in the intersection. So that's a good segue over to Curtis. You've had lots of nice things said about you. <laughs> you're not blushing. So you're capitalized. We have tech. Interesting space, a space that itself, it's not just us. The space itself is ripe for kind of these changes. So what's next for MyoVision then? The what's what's happening? What? How does this raise then change our trajectory going forward? Well, I feel like I should start out by saying... Uh, you always have to stay humble because the minute you're not humble, um, bad things happen to you. So as much as I appreciate all the comments. Um, no, I think, you know, uh, if we go back to the um, 
the ITS America show in uh, in Dallas this year, which is re- which is around the time just I think it was just after we announced the the raise and the GTT acquisition. Um, uh, it was the first time that I'd been at a um, an ITS show where the market was actually talking back to us about digital infrastructure. Like we've been talking to the market for a decade about smartphones at the intersection and sort of the digitization of of mobility infrastructure, but it was the first time where. Um, you know, USDOT, ITS America, and a number of the vendors are starting to talk about digitization. Um, so I think, you know, a, a, big, a big a big part of like, why do this raise now is that, you know, we've been building this, this like the, the foundation or, you know, building the track uh, in advance of the train getting there for a decade. Um, and now the world seems like it's finally ready to, to embrace the di- digitization of infrastructure. Um, and, you know, we, we're fortunate to have been thinking about this for, for a, a lo- really long time. Um, and now that the market's ready for us, you know, we, we needed to sort of get, get to a, a scale where we could accelerate and fulfill against that, that demand. So, um, so yeah, we're really excited to be, be partnered with, uh, with all of our investors, certainly including the two that are sitting here and, uh. Yeah, really exciting things are coming up. Can I can I jump in though a little bit because I remember the lens uh, that we had back in two thousand and eighteen. And Mark, you might be able to relate to this. It's really hard in tech, especially after just the exuberance we've had over the last few years, to find companies that are able to take the outside capital that they get and convert that into revenue and be really efficient with that capital. I cannot tell you, Mile Vision is probably the one company that I've come across over a decade that has consistently been able to convert $1 of outside equity into at least $1 trailing 12-month revenue. And so that, that speaks to not just that the technology or the solution is super relevant to the customers, but it speaks to um, how you're executing and and that's something that is a rarity in the market. And we were just doing the math, and I know this massive financing, it's so great. Like you think about the capital markets and where things are at right now. This is a huge accomplishment to have the confidence of a group like Mavericks and TELUS and NEDC to come in and, and co-lead the round. Um, but it really is fascinating to see how you've kept that efficiency you know, that conversion efficiency of outside capital to growth of your business and now profitability. Well, I'll tell you the one thing that we're really passionate about, maybe that drives us to, to be efficient in the, in that process is, um, you know, there's going back probably around the time that, that you first invested, there, there was this sort of um, thought experiment that we did internally, which was like, if we were to, you know, quote unquote, solve traffic tomorrow, right? So however that that means improving efficiency, improving safety, right? We have some new technology product uh, that, that solves traffic. Um, how long would it take us to to have that solution manifest itself at scale in the market, right? And because of the refresh rates, 25 years in, in the case of intersections, uh, even if you solve traffic tomorrow, it would take the rest of my career um, to, to manifest that at scale. And you'd be like four or five technology generations behind by the time you're done. So it was really this sort of insight of like, Man, no matter how hard we work, the market structure and the unit economics fundamentally of the intersection are going to mean that uh, it just you're never going to get to to the objective. Um, so yeah, we've been really anchored in what we call total cost of ownership. But like, how do we bring that that intersection cost down such that the budgets that we have available to us can can actually support keeping up with the refresh rates, such that you know in a in a industrial um, you know an IoT market, industrial industrial um, digitization market like you know called five-year refresh cycles three to five year refresh refresh cycles not 25 years yeah i mean i think one of the most fascinating aspects of the my vision technology it kind of falls into the general technology bucket where it's easy to you know underestimate the impact in the short term but you know you will or sorry you will overestimate the impact in the short term but underestimate it in the long term and so my vision impact on safety and cost of your you know cost of ownership at the municipality level you know doesn't necessarily always factor in the safety components of you know fire and police yeah. and signal prioritization. So first responders and ambulances arriving faster, how do you quantify that value? 
reduction, like vision zero, reducing the number of, you know, of interactions or, you know, uh, accidents between pedestrian cyclists vehicles in an, in an intersection if you can find a way to do that tremendous value over and above like the traditional cost of ownership because yeah. the urban standard of living the quality of living goes up substantially and so one of the things with technology that's fascinating is how it can change business models or change interaction models and the myovision technology has the ability to change how we operate as a city and how we interact within that city. And it can change things more uh, than we think it's going to in the long term. So it's a fundamental shift in how we interact and live. And that's one of the things that makes it so exciting. I got a final question. It's a great segue. And what I think it is, is like, I'm a, I love tech. I've been reading about tech my whole life, but some tech doesn't really touch your life. This is one of those elements of we all you know, we're immersed in this, but we all also try to travel through urban spaces on a regular basis. So my closing question to you is if there is one thing, it doesn't have to touch on MyoVision's business, but if there's one thing that you would love to see change that would make your commute, you're trying to get groceries, you're whatever you're trying to do in your day better, easier, faster, what would it be? Now, I will start to give you an example. I'm an avid cyclist. I will bike in just about anything. I commuted in Toronto for about 10 years. They, it is wonderful to see the build out of cycling infrastructure, but the thing that I think most cities struggle with is turning it into a network. So you end up with these kind of cycling lanes that just end and kick you out into the road. And that's fine for me. But when I look at my kids, if I look at my wife, if I wanted to get them to ride more regularly, that's a hard no. So my wish list would be networks. Not just paths, but networks. So that's my wish, but I'm geeky. Yeah, I'll, I mean, I'll go next. And, and not to similar, I do a lot of cycling. But, um, you know, for me, safety yeah. and reducing the number of accidents at intersection sidewalks, whether that be vehicle to vehicle or vehicle to pedestrian, if we could eliminate all of that human tragedy, suffering and pain, that would be my magic wand. Well, that changes and, behavior then, right? Well, yeah, and you I mean your networking part is also was really uh, uh, was alluding to safety, mm -hmm. right? You you you, you you had network and safety kind of equivalent in that sense, and there's other ways to do it in addition to network, and so that for me would be the one thing if we can reduce the amount of uh, trauma that's out there, that would be fantastic. Wow, I love it. Uh, breathability. So if I just wrap what the two of you just said into a breathability kind of, you know, bucket, I, you know, I started my career doing some of the very first uh, greenhouse gas offset trades. And then I kind of got away from it because the policy debate was going to be a legacy uh, project. You know, I'd be 150 in my walker <laughs> finally getting, you know, the policy done up. But I think if we can reduce congestion, increase safety, you know, really kind of entice people to live healthier and smarter. And hopefully you kind of get all types of different, you know, commuting you know, processes underway, um, I think what you do is you actually bring down the emissions and then the cities are livable. I mean, I mean, I'll, I mean, certainly safety and congestion. I mean, that's why we, that's why we come into work every day is to drive that, but I'll, maybe I'll take it a slightly different direction. So I think as, as infrastructure digitizes, right, it enables all the things that, uh, that was just, just talked about, but I think it also, uh, can create some fun in a city, right? Like fundamentally, um, we all experience traffic every day. Like on some level, intersections is a is a consumer market. It's good. It's a you know B to B, B to G to C um, kind of kind of a market. You know, today, citizens only ever phone the city when things are so bad, uh, and then they you know share their opinions, and then uh, city work c c city staff work really hard to make it better and then never get any feedback as to whether it actually was better right so at a minimum imagine um engaging you know a, a sort of a close a closed loop experience for both city staff that are passionate about this stuff and work really hard and for the citizen uh to be able to share insights before they get you know see red and get triggered uh but then also to be able to uh, hit the like button when then their drive got better um and they get they get notified so i think there's sort of this consumer integration piece that you would never in the current unit economics you would never do it because it'd just be way too expensive but if everything's digitized everything's driven on data uh everything's on a communication network all of a sudden you can your your cost your incremental cost to deliver these little dopamine hits become zero and you're all of a sudden going to be inclined to do it so for, for as people are sitting on a, on an expressway and bumper to bumper traffic and imagining a future world where this is fun for some reason, 
that's the you'll, you'll know that we've arrived <laughs> on all of the other layers that when it's fun talked about when we can deliver you a fun experience for free i love that because it's because it, the safety thing goes back to fear right like and then there's this whole thing about like the physical experience of being in a place that's clean and then you ended up with fun we're going to end up in disney world by the time we're done and dopamine and dopamine <laughs> dopamine hits on that very happy note thank you for the conversation uh this is the intersection tune in for more episodes as they come thank you thank you